thank you for coming. So, quick question: How many of you are Java developers in this room? Oh, nice. And how many of you are heard about Quarkus also? <laughs> okay, I think I'm working out because then you guys are working out about Quarkus. So, yeah, today I'm going to talk a little bit about Quarkus doing serverless for Java developers. So, I just made one my uh, OpenShift cluster this morning, but I don't know why, just shutting down. So maybe the end of my live demo, maybe not going to work today, but I'm going to show you that thing, like the YouTube channel, or just promo stuff. So my name is Daniel o. I'm working for Red Hat at a middleware so business unit. I focus on uh, technical marketing stuff, uh, create a demo workshop, and slide deck, and material to use everyone and I am focused on cloud native application and cloud native runtime as Google, Node.js, Cortex, and etc. and Quarkus. And out of Red Hat, I am CNCF ambassador and DevOps Institute ambassador. So yeah, I got a bunch of things to engage in KubeCon and Cube stuff and ecosystem. So this day I'm a big being and I find my top 25 and application development track and keep calm uh, next time seminar if they be Europe and uh, there are three interesting topics I saw and even but one thing uh, a little bit of shame uh, people really want to talk about uh, application development and probably just better than actual application development so. So a couple of months ago, uh, I was there in Kukon in uh, San Diego in Boca Raton. Yeah. So I met many people, and they saying, uh, "Yeah, I am developer." Oh, really? So and uh, after that, and turns out uh, they are all Kubernetes developer, not application developer. <laughs> so so they are playing with the uh, YAML file in Helm and the Kubernetes CI, not actual application. So I just more focus on uh, application development and Java. I've been a long time Java developer, more than uh, 20 years, and uh, I am uh, the open source Docker correspondent in, uh, invented by Red Hat, but it's a vendor natural, uh, neutral uh, website that you can write anything about open source. It's Kubernetes or just uh, any open source technology provider you can share. And if you are interested about sharing your idea and thought and any, any suggestion, just let me know. You can uh, follow my Twitter and you can post my Git repository and then you can send me email directly. Uh, any interesting some stuff, my role and my specialty and CACF and some office stuff, just let me know. So the application architecture keeps changing and growing along with the new platform and technology trend. So decades ago, maybe 1990s or early 2000, we are playing with the uh, modernist application, three-tier architecture, like the web server, application server, and database, that's all. And Oracle, and IBM, that's all. Sometimes they will see AP, sometimes, most time, Oracle and IBM. So, the monolithic application was pretty cool. I was there. The problem is uh, really hard to maintain. If you want to do one single code, you need to test every single detail, like a migration test, performance test, functionality test, and integration test. If you do something wrong, just part of that, you need to do everything over again, over again, even late night. That's why, oh, what is how do we fix this problem? So that's why the microservice was born from uh, Netflix OSS stuff and Spring Boot back in 2013. Pretty awesome. Now the developer just focus on their own application and running on Spring Boot and no need to install any way middleware from the start. So microservice was born and Kubernetes just came up and uh, back in 2014 and uh, everybody, everything changed because the long time is now Kubernetes. It's not an option, it's a mandatory new platform, immutable infrastructure with the Linux container technology. So 
Now, you don't need some uh, dynamic capability any longer. So back in 1995, Java OS came up, and the one of the awesome of Java technology is dynamic capability. So you just create Michael, and uh, you can run your Java application, any application server, for serving your widget request on around the world, the web-based architecture. That was really awesome. So what is the uh, dynamic capability? You can, the, at long time, your Java application will parse your annotation and a descriptor and loading memory. Everything will be done at one time rather than real time. That is a super awesome feature of Java technology at that time. But now we have Kubernetes immutable infrastructure, which means you need to deploy the same application thousands of times on your Kubernetes cluster. Not just tens of, not hundreds, not ten virtual machines. So you need to more of some repeatable task rather than dynamic capability. So that's why the Java has some concern and uh, issue to optimize the some memory footprint stuff and the start time. And cloud name is a definitely uh, depends on Kubernetes stuff. Some people confuse uh, between microservices and cloud native. Microservices was born both for Kubernetes and Linux container technology, which means Linux container like Docker and OCI and Cryo and also Kubernetes is good to have for microservices, not mandatory. But cloud native application is a must have Kubernetes stuff. So that is a little bit similar but totally different and serverless. So whenever I try to talk about serverless stuff and the people, oh yeah, I know serverless. What's that? Amazon Lambda. This is the truth. But now we have a Kubernetes. We have our own plan Kubernetes and vanilla Kubernetes. How to make it uh, happen, the same functionality like Amazon Lambda. So luckily, Google made a uh, like a some primitive blocking and uh, you can build your Microsoft application as serverless, and a whole bunch of things uh, keep moving forward to event trigger. So common deployment platform on this architecture, on this uh, technology, Kubernetes, Knative, and Istio. So Istio is uh, how many of you are uh, some experienced part of the Istio service mesh? Just two, really? Because you are all developers, or you are not interested about some Kubernetes stuff. Yeah, it's still service. Currently, the Knative is uh, based on Kubernetes platform to build, deploy, manage your Microsoft application as a serverless. And Knative uh, has Istio service mesh as default. That is normal, but there will be uh, removed soon. So by the way, the Istio service match is came up uh, to uh, help out the developer potential concern. When we, okay, let's say I am Java developer and I need to develop Microsoft's application running on multiple cluster, much multiple runtime in production, local environment as well. And you may heard about some uh, trial factor and uh, so many microservices principle is that uh, so they are saying you need to uh, handle non-microservices, non-functionality of microservices which means you need to uh, figure out how to handle uh, forward programs and smart library and uh, kernel deployment and failover there are so many things to do, circuit breaking but this whole bunch of things is mandatory for running your microservices in production, not the working model. So for this concept, who were uh, handling this kind of capability? It's an ops team's responsibility. But we are doing DevOps and uh, microservices came up and uh, people really uh, rely on developer, super developer. And that developer, oh, okay, I printed some property and I printed some uh, 
some calculation to handle circuit breaking, or four torus, or some smart logging. All bunch of this thing is uh, should be added in your application Java method or proper file or demo file. Not even this is not related to your business logic. I need to put just if else for loop and some business logic. I need to focus on that thing and optimizing, not take care of that non-functional capabilities. So that's why Istio Service Mesh uh, will handle that instead of the, uh, the for developers. So behind the scene, the Envoy proxy sidecar, uh, that is the uh, running inside the same part uh, next by your application container and handle the network traffic and the logging and metrics and the authentication and socket breaking. So this the service, uh, service mesh uh, will handle that. That is the, uh, the service mesh technology. So microservices for a cloud native is kind of journey, not one day happening. So from migration from monolith to uh, microservice and using some CI CD pipeline stuff. And the next step is service mesh, and last thing is the sort of last inventory. So enterprise Java architecture, just like that, I already said many years ago, unfortunately, you know what, just two hours earlier, I ran the, the next Java, the Quarkus hands-on workshop, and I asked some people, and some people still play with the some historical enterprise Java stack, which means uh, middleware application server like the Tomcat or uh, web logic, IBM, and on top of that, web server, Apache, or the other applications, web server, and database, three tier, and application might be cycle a month, or one month, two months, and memory at least two gig in reality, and the starting time, definitely one minute, something like that, and uh, you guys already have experience something like this. And uh, in a modern application in Java stack, things are changing. The single application like Spring Boot, Node.js, Cortex, and the application have like quite short days, and memory uh, smaller, and start time maybe second. But problem is the right side here. Uh, that is the here, okay, here. So dynamic application framework and application server inside like embedded content, net, jelly, something like that. It's a skill uh, there and JVM. No change even we are moving to Kubernetes cluster. So that's why people all oh, we need to so I just be uh, uh, evaluate my old Microsoft application on Kubernetes and Oh, some of the application uh, can be handled eventually, but not real time, like a request response HTTP protocol. Maybe each, it can be asynchronized and it can be uh, handled by the Kafka cluster and the topic messaging stuff. But how do, how do I do that? Ah, you need to install a Kafka server and you need to run some event driven uh, technology. What is that? Uh, you need to run BirdX, you need to some Another program language, oh, should I? Yeah, it definitely uh, relates to your job security in the next five months. Oh, really? So this is really happening. So, so that's why yeah, some people yeah, really hate some event-driven and even serverless because they need to learn something new. Because the Java have some uh, issue and potential problem to go to serverless. So this is some survey. Uh, so people really love to know JS and Python and Go. I actually uh, have some experience to develop Go because a couple years ago, Go is just oh, it's so super popular. So Go could be next generation foreign language. So everybody know needed to learn Go and also to create some PR in the Kubernetes or ecosystem project, all implemented by Go. So okay, Go is maybe next my mission, so I play with that some time. But you know, just in my opinion, the Go is not 
are good for actual application development. It's more of cost on the low level like engine or core. So this is the new trend for serverless. So what, what is the hidden truth of the Java with the Linux container and running on Kubernetes? So the left side is uh, the, the blue box is just Kubernetes or worker node. So let's say we have the same capacity worker load, the same memory, same CPU, some same uh, hardware resource, and uh, we can deploy the traditional cloud native Java stack, for example, Spring Boot. So just four application can be running, and Node.js twice time, it's double time, and Go is uh, triple time. This is a more the high, the, the resource density perspective. So okay, so when I show uh, this slide deck to operation team manager, and he really loved that. Okay, now I can find a way to save my money because uh, all developer, uh, if all developer uh, can develop the Go language and to uh, create some application, and uh, we just saved our uh, hardware. So don't tell me uh, we need to buy new servers. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's not not gonna happen because uh, everybody is doing some uh, Java or Node.js, but don't want to learn uh, anything new because still learning curve make it happen. So what happened in the Java? So there are two things, uh, startup and memory, just right side here. here. So there are some overhead, some loading classes and bytecode and just-in-time compiler based on that. And memory overhead, the parsing descriptor and the read annotation, so many things to do at runtime rather than build time. But that is a really awesome feature back in 1990s and early 2000s. But now we have a different infrastructure, so things change. So Quarkus, uh, we made, I'm ready, we already have made this one. So name is Quark, is the some physics, uh, quantum, like a very tiny. Some people told me, why don't, why didn't you make some name like an Ant-Man because uh, people really easy to understand and uh, remember, but we don't have any money to <laughs> give some Marvel studio and Disney. So that's why Quark is a very small and us means uh, engineering. Everybody's doing engineering people. So engineering people really focus on optimizing and making faster, making uh, easier and making high performance. So this is uh, the name from, and but subtitle is the supersonic subatomic Java. So supersonic uh, came from the Queen song, supersonic mannerism, and subatomic is a very small, tiny stuff, and this is a whole bunch of based on Java, which means if you are a Java developer, you don't need to run anything new. It's a pretty similar, pretty familiar using Maven plugin, using Maven command, and the same as the API. Even you can run Spring with the application on top of that. So one thing you should be aware of that, uh, here, we, I just removed the monolith architecture. So some people just ask me, hey Daniel, uh, how do we uh, migrate existing uh, Tomcat-based Java application to Quarkus? You shouldn't. Yeah, so focus is more focused on, definitely focus on cloud native microservice and serverless and event driven architecture rather than monolithic application. If you want to migrate, it's not migration. It's a, you need to rewrite and uh, redevelop. So please, please don't migrate from existing some heavyweight Frankenstein Java application to focus. Not a chance. Please don't do that. So let me show you quickly uh, about uh, how Quarkus works here. So one of the easiest way uh, to get started Quarkus application development here is Quarkus.io. So we have our official uh, website, like a spring.io. So you can go to and find any practical and useful, any fun stuff in here. 
if you are a developer and click on start coding you all have some experience about the focus uh, the spring stuff and maybe spring.io maybe beginning and starting point to develop the spring application right so this is a very similar but a little bit convenient so extension means uh, it's a dependency. So let's say I want to add some uh, REST, a REST pool API. I want to add some capability to communicate database. Or I want to add something else in my Java application. How do you do that? So it, the, the normal way, OK, I need some download some dependency library like um, from Maven repository, like some Java file stuff, and I put into some uh, application profile file and the key and variable. And after that, you need to add some annotation or um, mandatory uh, syntax in your Java method. That is normal way, typical way, but so boring. And if you made a mistake, just one single line, your application not gonna work. So that's why we made some, make it simple. And extension is a capability. So you can add any extension, like a click on, or even you can search. And also here, uh, the build tool as default Maven, but you can use Gradle as well. But it's a tech, oh, here, okay. You can uh, use Gradle, and we are a little bit more testing, but still a tech preview, but you can still use it technically. But I'm more a uh, Maven person, so let's say, uh, okay, um, maybe let's the EG and uh, some Hibernate and Hibernate with the uh, Panache. So this is uh, one of my favorite, uh, Hibernate with the Panache. Anyone have some heard about what Panache is? No one? So, oh, okay, very nice. So when you, uh, create the Java beans to interact with the RDBMS, you need to create a getter setter for some Java attribute in your Java method to bring to your uh, the DBMS the field and attribute the table, something like that. But the panache uh, auto wire, that kind of stuff. So you don't need to uh, define getter setter in your Java mesh any longer. The, you just define the attribute, the private um, name, private string, uh, telephone number, something like that, and after that, get a setter automatic auto wired by workers using Panache extension. So pretty easy, make it shorter, you are the code line, and uh, pretty easy to read and understand by any other developer. So once you uh, select uh, whatever you want, and uh, maybe you can change it, uh, your group name, well, something uh, devconf cg or purpose, something like that. And click on generate your application, automatically download the zip file, and unstrack your zip file and go to the here. And now you can see just, uh, I just select the default Maven architecture. So that's why you can find the so Maven architecture and the source directory and the Maven test, something like that. And now let's get started application development. Really easy and same. And I already pulled down one application. So here is my local environment. And the same thing, I'm a Maven guy. So, and you can use any ID tool. So in my case, I just want to use the VS Code. I'm going to zoom in a bit to see. Better? You uh, can see it back there. Perfect. Alrighty. I'm going to zoom in size on. Okay. So I'm changing code as a default. Okay, here we go. So once you open the, uh, the application, the project with your prepare ID tool, you can see uh, SRC directory and uh, some Maven command and XML file here. So you can see the 
the, the current, the progress version here, the raised one released 1.1.1 final, and the 1.2 will be coming soon. And this is a 100% open source project. Anyone can use that, just like the other the Java framework. And we will read it, we will support the Azure product, uh, the Quarkus, in, uh, around uh, May and April, end of April, at Red Hat Summit. But after the productization, you can still use the open source project for your application development. And some dependency will be showing up here, dependency uh, area, just like uh, normal Maven architecture. And uh, you can use the Maven uh, plugin to compile, build, and package. And one thing, here we go, and uh, the Quarkus has all native uh, profile. So Quarkus enable Java developer build two type of application artifact. One is so just the uh, Uber job or Fetcher, the job file and running on JVM, hotspot technology. And the other one is the, the Quarkus build application as executable file. You can run that file without JVM, but running on GraalVM. So let me show that thing, just, uh, just a minute later. Okay, and I'm gonna, there are also one simple Java application as simple here. I just put in the, the REST API. So here is the REST API endpoint and return hello. Okay, uh, let's say I'm, I'm, I am Java developer. So okay, so I just want to make sure if this application works properly. So in this way, just run Maven and compile and Quarkus and colon dev. It's a development mode. So one of the beauty of the Quarkus here is already up. And you can see here, live coding activation. And uh, we just need to hear, uh, I need to zoom out a little bit. Okay, here we go. So, you can see uh, here develop the, the debug, it, to run debug mode of the Quarkus, the, the support is already open, and you can see here the, the current version of the Quarkus and the development activated. And live coding activity, what does that mean? I'm gonna show you the thing. Just open new web browser here, uh, localhost 8080, and this is a landing page of the Quarkus, and the endpoint, hello. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, bigger, 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 okay, cool. So, oh yeah, this application works totally, uh, okay, so what are we gonna do next? Okay, let's change the code. So, just simple change the code. Welcome, maybe Quarkus, uh, today is my server let's start. And I just save the file and back to the here and reload the web browser and uh, just change that. And back to the here and I just need the hot place just need a 0.7 second. So this is a live coding means. So in backend, uh, we just, the developer perspective, they need to recompile and redeploy and rerunning my application. Maybe sometimes a hotspot uh, make it shorter, but still that three step should be done whenever you change the code. But Quarkus, when you just reload web page or when you just call endpoint like a call command, this focus make it happen automatically. And some people saying it's a magic So this is a live coding means, and uh, and this is a end of the day uh, in the uh, make it happier for developer. So make it shorten uh, the developer uh, productivity and develop uh, some. Uh, working and the daily work. And one, I'm going to be shutting down my local environment and reload the page, so it's gone, okay? And next step is, oh, yeah, I needed to uh, packaging my application. Okay, I already done my application code change. So same, the command line, the Maven, uh, package, and I'm going to skip the unit test because the here, the unit test 
uh, the expect, the hello, but I already changed the, the welcome, so I'm gonna skip that, I'm, I'm not gonna mess up. And Maven package, the skip testing. The same command line, so no need, oh, in order to build Quarkus application, I need to run, I need to remember a new command line, don't need it to that. Just same thing, I already built success, and using Java command to run, target directory and purpose and run out the job file. But in order but for do that, here is my MacBook, the monitor activity, the activity monitor. And I already logged the couple of JVM. Oops. So okay, here we go. I have already a running full JVM. So big one is almost a 500 and a smaller one 47 and second uh, smaller one almost 190. Just remember that. Back to the here and run application. Oh, it's running, but things change. So profile prod activity. What does that mean? I'm going to show you that thing. And we just need here 0.5 second, half a second to start up. So one of the region. The developer really love to Spring Boot is the, oh, super fast. Just a couple of seconds to start up. But this is uh, faster than any other Java runtime. But yeah, 1.5 second and half a second doesn't matter. I'll play with the Spring Boot, go ahead, doesn't matter. But I want to just show you, so we changed some technology. And uh, back to the web browser. And server still up. And here, monitoring, and once again, Java here, and now we here, small one here. Okay, so memory footprint to run this simple RESTful API with the JVM uh, is uh, 82.3 megabyte. It's very small, but just remember that I'm gonna show the, another interesting stuff. And what is the uh, pro activate, activated? So, so under resource directory, it's one single a application property file. So all developers sometimes uh, made a mistake to change the configuration. For me, I've been doing sometimes many, many years ago, and I ruined all production environment because there are some CI CD stuff. I changed the code and property file just for my local environment, and I push the code, and that is automatically uh, deployed to production in just five minutes. I didn't even recognize that thing, and my manager came to me, what did you do? Oh, man, yeah, but this is something yeah, happening uh, everywhere. So that's why, so we have uh, the different files the property files for local environment or the staging production or a metadata database or you can put into some comment no, do not change this property, property file because this is only production. So Quarkus, when you run Quarkus development mode and uh, they will pick it up, the default property. But if you add some same property with the, some prod something name equal Daniel and you can and after that you build uh, this application using Maven package the Quarkus auto wire that start with the prod uh, prefix and not doesn't pick any others so you can just so you can define multiple uh, property okay? like a stage or some uh, test. You can define any, uh, any prefix to packaging. And uh, during the, the development mode and the uh, Maven packaging command line, it's uh, automatically auto-wired the uh, prod prefix and, uh, any, uh, and without prefix. But you, if, if you define <coughs> some test staging, you need to pass down that parameter, like a, uh, dash D, something like that. Okay, back to here. And I'm gonna skip 
uh, I want to last my uh, maybe today demo stuff. So same thing, Maven package, and I'm going to use the profile native images. It's going to take uh, uh, longer than uh, the Maven just a package to build a job file because uh, the native executable image, the Quarkus build everything at, non at build time rather than run time. So we put in the, some dependency. Like uh, imagine the Linux container, Docker. So Docker container uh, contain everything, the runtime, application code, and dependency. That's why Docker and containers has own immutable and portability features to run any Kubernetes, any uh, container engine. So this is uh, maybe similar. So the, the executable file uh, contains any dependency to run this application. That's why uh, it takes a little bit longer. But just one time build and uh, deploy thousand time on your Kubernetes after containerization. So already done. And you can see that target directory. Now you have the runnable file here. And just using this, just how to run this application. Just run the file because this is a secure file. So run is the MacBook security stuff. Now you can see here, so just 22 milliseconds to start up. The same application, but different startup time. So if you have just 20 microservices Java application and running on single Kubernetes cluster, and you don't need to use Quarkus, just doing whatever you need. But you have maybe hundreds of thousand Microsoft Java application and run it on maybe hundred Kubernetes worker nodes. And uh, you need to deploy every day, and, uh, but one deploy means maybe thousand pods replication. So which one would be better? And uh, just imagine serverless stuff. So serverless, so without any uh, request in the meantime, like a 30 second or five minute, your application pod will be scaled down to zero. But problem is end user don't need to recognize that thing. So end user may click on your web browser or mobile, some touch on your mobile phone, and that hibernated pod will be go up automatically in a short time, like a just one second or two seconds. But some application, even Java application, to start up just five seconds, or some application needed to 10 milliseconds, or uh, 100 milliseconds, which one would be better for event driven or uh, some less? with Java technology. So that's why uh, the Quarkus uh, more fit in the, this architecture. And one thing, one more, so back to the, uh, the monitoring stuff and runner here. So back to here and run. Okay, now we can see. So 5.5 megabytes. So previously, same application and running on JVM, we need the 85, something like that. And this is, we need just the five. It's a 15 or 16 times less than memory footprint. And start of time, we just need a one second or half a second, but now we have a 20, 20 millisecond. It's almost 600 times faster than uh, any other the Microsoft's application. So speed and scalability and performance, one of them you are some concern on your Kubernetes or your microservice architecture or event-driven architecture, maybe Quarkus should be your answer for next generation Java technology. But the other way, yeah, you can do that whatever you want. And back to the here. And go to the application. Yeah, it's working. So one thing, actually, I was supposed to show one thing more is the so Kubernetes native stuff. So 
there are one just single simple uh, YAML file you can define using the Kubernetes CL, and you just deploy your containerized corpus application on your Kubernetes using KNAV serving. And after that, your application uh, will be handled by serverless, which means you don't request any uh, application request uh, in five minutes or in 30 seconds, in 20 minutes, the application will be scaled down to zero automatically. But problem is when you call this URL, some your application by call command or uh, reload web browser, and uh, sometimes it takes uh, 30 seconds or uh, 10 seconds, but Quarkus using native executable file, it's just, uh, just show up right away. So that is a really uh, awesome for serverless architecture. Well, actually, I'm going to use the uh, OpenShift cluster today, but yeah, something messed up uh, at, uh, in this morning, so there's no deployment, actually. So, back to the, some slide stack. So, how make it happen to super fast and a small memory for free? So based on that, uh, focus application using JVM as well as GraalVM, but not every GraalVM technology. We just use Graal compiler and Subtray VM, the actual runtime. So because it's a GraalVM is uh, invented by Oracle, and there are two versions. One is the uh, community version, and the other is the enterprise version. So enterprise version is uh, supports some more enterprise grade functionality like Devo, etc. We just only use uh, compiler and substrate PM. So if you have a, maybe you might have some experience to uh, use the Graal VM technology with your application, it's really hard to create some. Uh, GraalVM configuration and some annotation and uh, some runtime, something like that. So after that, so Java and container and porkers. You can now see just the here, so many porkers in the same uh, high density, but this is uh, running on uh, GraalVM and executable image. If you are using the JVM technology, but it could be possible, but not like that. Maybe better than better than this one, but not like more the smaller because the JVM still uh, have a lot of to spend a lot of money and a lot of the memory. So we change this spot, but this is the uh, optional. So you can use the hotspot and the gravian and the startup time millisecond and uh, things. Many, many changes. Uh, my memory is uh, just does just maybe 10 or 20. So, a couple of the uh, benefits or the quirks for developer point of view. I've been a long time Java developer. So, live coding and unified compilation, the two things are really cool. So, you don't worry about oh, repackaging, redeploy, and and also the oh, configuration messed up. You don't need to worry about that thing any longer. This is really awesome. And uh, extensions. You can even create your own custom extensions. So, so this is open source project. So we have already many uh, company and organization and even developer uh, wants to uh, create own custom extension and create a PR. Actually, already they did. So. For example, so we have uh, some mailing server, we have uh, some third party um, extensions, and you can add that functionality on your Maven Palm XML. But problem, problem is your application is super fast, but when you communicate that third party application, it takes a long time. But end user perspective, oh, it takes a long time. So quality is low and oh, that's good. But you, you can have a custom extension and link to your third party on your purpose and uh, build native executable and run still super fast. So 
that's the only the good benefit. And supersonic subatomic. Now you are, I totally yeah, I believe you are understand that this one. And REST API, I just showed them today, REST API stuff, but they can connect the CROD, like a transaction or the BMS, like a hibernate panache was linked to the MongoDB, something like that, and Postgres, and still faster than the others. And Focus, RBM, and uh, just JDK, and traditional Java stack. <coughs> Excuse me. So unified imperative reactive. So just a couple months ago, <clears throat> I have some uh, developer meetup, but not normal developer. It's an integration developer. They are uh, uh, really uh, love to uh, play with the, the Kafka. So they are create the messaging and Kafka cluster and topic and integration program even using Java technology. So one thing they have some concern is the. There are two types of language, or two types of some, some technology stack. Traditional application and integration application, but still same Java technology. <coughs> so of course, you don't need to worry about that. <coughs> so different annotation, inject and streaming, or uh, incoming and outgoing, and you if you add incoming annotation on your Java method and Quarkus with auto wire, your Java method as event driven stuff, like a link to Kafka cluster, you should, yeah, of course, you should uh, add, so where is my Kafka cluster? And where is my Kafka cluster port number? You should be add that kind of some required field and variable on your application that properly files. But the other things is exactly the same, like in parallel application, like a REST API and the exposure. And you can inject event burst or bug act context uh, to handle your uh, event driven application. And more and more extension uh, can be coming up. So, one of the, I just saying, the Istio service mesh enable Java developer to get rid of their concern about non-functional microservices like monitoring, observation, and circuit breaking, etc. So, but Java developers that point, okay, how to add some Jaeger configuration on my Java application? Okay, you needed to add this property file, this property in your specific file. And you can add some logic on your Java method or a classes file. So pre some boring step. And you can add the Jaeger or Prometheus extension on your purpose. And the all required and mandatory property and that things already generate. And create some even, you can deploy purpose application on Kubernetes and all manifesto all will be generated. Like a, some deployment YAML file and uh, the other YAML file. So last one, uh, the, we have the just enough you know, uh, the Spring Boot strategy in Quarkus. So the goal is the uh, popular I and mean, familiar with the uh, existing Quark, uh, the Spring Boot application. So some people came to me, hey Daniel. Do we need to migrate from existing Spring Boot application to Quarkus because that is a super awesome, a native executable, and super fast and small memory footprint? You don't need to do that. Not entire Spring ecosystem, but we support the common popular the Spring Spring Boot ecosystem, such as the dependent injection and MVC and data JPA and security and more and more will be coming up. The reason why. We don't need to migrate the existing application. And we just need to run the Quarkus application. But end of the day, maybe uh, the developer can develop all of this Quarkus, uh, some annotation, syntax, et cetera. But now they can run Spring Boot application without migration on Quarkus if they are using this kind of ecosystem. Why do, why do they do that? Because the even Spring Boot, oh, but small memory footprint and super fast, like a millisecond, without any change. 
So the goal feels familiar in you at the same time. That is the main goal of the quarkus. So there are some bunch of things to uh, learn more quarkus stuff. Uh, we have uh, the quarkus.io, I already showed that. And uh, the Julie chat, you can participate in any, if you have any question, uh, just so you can add any uh, question and some share your idea. And there are quarkus Twitter, and you can uh, send me or any something about quarkus uh, problem and issue and any idea, you can uh, send me my Twitter as well. And I think it's done. And uh, any question? Yep. Uh, question, please. Uh, so, from your perspective, uh, how do you see the adoption of corpus uh, in the next couple of years? Do you, do you think it's, it, it will pick up, it will move on, or? What's your feeling from the, you know, the organizations from, from people around the world? Yep. Is it going to happen or is yep. it's just a thing that's yep. kind of nice and sexy now? But yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, the question was, uh, how are we going to be the focus in the next couple, maybe the couple of years? Uh, how about looking at the focus? Yeah, I got a many chance to luckily uh, to go on a business travel around the world and the uh, United States even APAC and uh, Europe, Middle East. And whenever I show this thing, and people say maybe still under 10% people already know what Quarkus is, and after the, the introduction of Quarkus, they really love that. And I don't think Quark, the Kubernetes will be dead in a couple of years. So which means the Kubernetes will keep going for next generation cloud architecture. Which means the, the Java still have a big concern to run the application on Kubernetes. So Quarkus uh, gives some answer or solution. So I really uh, see some bright side, <laughs> not really sexy, but yeah. So, and you know also there are many the other ones like Microsoft and the others, and they are already. Uh, have almost similar feature, like a so executable and driving and stuff. That means our trend will move forward to the performance stuff on Kubernetes, not the train machine, not the other. So definitely uh, will be better, uh, maybe next year or even uh, in two years. So the Red Hat, we are focused on uh, we focus on maybe uh, application side corpus and infrastructure side is an open shift on Kubernetes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Last? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. I remember any plans in Quarkus system to expose more features for, from Graal VM, like some polyglot features with the top framework. We don't have a plan to use the but the question is, yeah, so we have plans to use the more driving enterprise features. It's not like the features, it's a good yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, just use the Gradient to compile the central VM, but we don't know actually, we continue to use that thing. You know, so we, you, you know also the, the JVM, the JVK stuff. So a lot of people now are making uh, the commercial, you need to pay for that if you use the Gradient JVK. So we really worry about that things. Even we just use the small part of Gradient uh, community version. So maybe uh, things change, but still we focus on uh, performance based on Gradient. Uh, but yeah. Now, but I think it's the uh, the Reddit summit uh, will be uh, the end of April, and we will. Have some big announcement about corpus. Maybe you can hear some more details. Especially a disclaimer on text writer, which is now working on native application right here. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming.